Hi, my name's Sam Durkin, and today as ever, we'll be doing a painting. This is what we're aiming for, but first we're going to have to do an undercoat. We're going to use a nice large brush to do that, and using a Coral Painter 2020. As you see in the top right hand corner, we've got the photograph I'm working from. But at the moment, we're just trying to get the whole car canvas covered in a paint layer. I've got this uh, footage sped up a little bit because you don't want to see me doing this for five minutes. This is the most interesting part of the painting. We're just trying to get the colour onto the canvas, get a general idea of where everything is. This will all be about how the painting works, rather than going into lots of technical detail about how to use painter. But I may do videos on that later, but I'll be more focused in those videos on specific aspects. And that's just about done. There we go. In this next section, we're using the tracing paper and a slightly smaller brush to just put in where the trees are and get a general idea of the painting overall. At this stage, we don't want to put any major detail in or go for anything that's too fiddly. We're just trying to get in the general idea of what's happening in the painting. As you see here, I've moved on to just putting some of the background colors in. Just generally moving and covering the canvas with the right color of paint. See here, we're putting some of the area where the leaves of the trees are, but we're not painting any of the leaves of the trees. We're just painting a general messy impression of where they are. As you see, the area around the light is one of the hardest places to work because the trees sort of get obliterated by the light coming through the trees. But we do need to put in some color back there for the light to resonate from. Just getting the foreground in here. definition into the whole painting but we're keeping it really loose. This brush is slightly smaller than the one we used before but it's still a very large brush because we don't want any detail or accuracy. working around this area where the light comes in. These will be the more darker bits in the future before we break through with the light. Mixing up the colors slightly on the canvas. Keep it fairly loose. Move down to a slightly smaller brush once again, but it's still fairly large. Just using the tracing paper here, just to get a general idea where things are. A little bit of blue coming through there at the top corner. Oops. There we go. As you see, I'm putting some blue in around and about that aren't actually in the painting. Sorry, on the uh, photograph. Just to liven up the picture more. After all, we're not going for an accurate representation of the photograph. This is just our inspiration. Mm -hmm. 
it's time to put some of these uh, these trees in a little darker than they were. Once again, using the tracing paper just to get a, a gauge of of where they are. Yeah. As you see, I'm not using a full black. Partly because I want to do that later, but I want to give these trees some life. Um, yeah, yeah, put some branches in. This one's the hardest one up here towards the light because it, it sort of dissolves into the light. I'm trying to get some kind of um, feel of these branches and stuff in. Just for the time being, we're not going to do a lot of that because we'll need a need a much thinner brush to sort of simulate the little twigs and branches of, uh, of the tops of the trees. only my second attempt at using coral painter. As you may realize I'm actually a more traditional painter and I've sort of been trying this out to get a more feel for the digital work and bringing some of those real world painting skills into the digital painting. I'm pretty sure you could translate some of these painting skills from the digital onto the onto the canvas because these this is the way I'd go about it on a canvas as well. I'm not using any kind of techniques like um, undos or layers um, or any of the other um, techniques you might use in a digital painting. Partly because I want to simulate the mistakes and mess you make in a real world painting in this digital painting. I think that adds more character to your work to sort of almost accept that mistakes can actually be um, happy accidents as uh, Bob Ross would have said. back there. It's a sort of well, bluey purple, let's call it that. This little palette that I've made up here um, under the photograph um, is uh, it's kind of is a slightly restrictive palette in the sense that it's not every colour that's in the photograph uh, but it is uh, representative of the colours of the photograph um, mostly. I did that using um, the eyedropper, I believe it's called. It looks like a little pipette. And I just sampled some of the colors from the photograph and then mixed them together on the uh, on this sort of mixing palette, I guess. Uh, and then I sort of left it, left it there. There you go, let's do a little bit of that. I like this feature a great deal. It, makes me feel like I'm actually using a painting. This kind of restricted palette is very more natural to a, to a painter than um, the color wheel than I believe um, a lot of drawing packages were certainly used to use. The fact that the colors also mix on the canvas um, is, is really nice and you can adjust how much that happens. I find that maybe a little too precise sometimes that you can do that, but um, precision isn't always bad. If you're doing something that you need that precision for, you want to have it. Yeah, get this uh, slightly brighter yellow in here. Just to liven things up. Still using this fairly large brush just to get the, the general sort of details in. 
but I'm mixing it up and putting a lot of colour on the canvas. Simulating this foreground, it's a nice. It's, it's got a nice purpley colour to the to the day. I mean, maybe this isn't what your eyes would see when you're out for a walk, but um, the effect I feel is is really very pleasant indeed. Right here, well, we've moved to a, to a much much smaller brush now. Just using the tracing paper just to get an idea of, of where things are. Let's move very quickly. We're just we're just going to be doing sort of lots of sort of scrappy motions that 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 generally get the idea of where the branches are. We're not actually going to try to paint them exactly are where they are because that would be tedious and uh, wouldn't produce a particularly vibrant picture. Um, it will produce an accurate picture, which is, is, is just something you might want to go for. But um, with my style, I like to keep things loose and, and more lively. Let's just get the edge of these branches in, because this one is in the foreground, and these, these ones are quite well defined here at the back. Let's get that out. Yeah, see that. That's what's that picture looks like without it so let's just go, go over that we're doing a bit blind I guess because while it's while it's like this we're having to sort of guess what we're putting onto the canvas um, but that's okay we, we know how thick the, the brush is and what color we got on there we can we can make it a, a reasonable guess about what we're doing let's move it fairly quickly just to get just to get the general idea of what's going on it is kind of scary putting the, the branches into the actual bright colour areas because we've spent so long making them that we are now going to put a lot of mess on the screen and, and this very high detail is, is, is immediately jarring. But it'll be alright in the end, I promise. Yeah, little, little branches there. go yeah. now I've, I've taken it off the black color and now I'm using this sort of slightly darker brown because these branches in this area around the light are not as highly defined as they might be in other parts of the painting so we want a few of these here but you see, I'm just sort of just drawing some sort of random scrappy lines here, just to give an impression of branches. And mines are quite an interesting thing. Um, when we look at a scene, we don't take in all the detail and every little bit. Um, our brains fill in lots of the gaps, and we can exploit that kind of way of seeing the world by doing almost the same thing by by putting in an impression of where things are and our brains will make up the picture for us. Even though these lines are not exactly like branches, we know that branches sort of look a bit like this. And so, because of the rest of the scene, we make up the picture in our minds, and then the picture looks like a forest, even though, in all reality, these are just blobs of colour on well, not a canvas, but on a screen. I mean, that's the essence of all, all painting, in a way. So we're almost doing a magic trick on the mind to fool you into thinking you're looking at something when you're not. Yeah, let's put some 
sort of lines down here, maybe to simulate bits of debris, branches, the like. Here we are continuing to put a bit more detail in, just using this brown colour to print some more of the branches. It's nice and quickly, just the sort of messy strokes. We'll see this part of the painting can look ex extremely messy, both on the canvas and on digital, we're, but we're trying to build this kind of chaos into the painting. We'll be going over a lot of this in the future, but we want these sort of messy strokes to be there behind the scenes. Just be poking through. Yeah, just increase the size of that brush a little. Darken that out. Yeah, this is the part where we we really start adding adding in more and more to the painting and really start building up kind of on the the final press here we're just blending this in see we're going over some of the stuff we've done and it's coming through behind it just adds more chaos that we've built we've got it there This is how I like to work, as is in even in a traditional painting, you, you paint it in, you paint it out, you paint it back in again until you finally get to where you want. This works very well with acrylic painting on canvas and uh, I'm using a simulated version of acrylic here in Painter. It's what I'm used to. I've had one of uh, my viewers send me in a photograph on my Facebook page um, that they, they'd like to see me do in here. So maybe next time I'll be working on one, uh, one of our viewers' photographs. If you'd, uh, you've taken a nice photograph that uh, you think I would look good in my style um, and you, you don't mind me making a video out of it, um, then uh, drop on over to my, my Facebook fan page and uh, send me a message about your photograph and uh, I'll link it in the, in the message and uh, we'll see if, uh, see if we can do it. Obviously, I won't be able to do everybody's. But if, you, if you've taken a nice, nice sort of uh, photograph that you think fits my style, then uh, maybe we'll give it a go. And uh, if you want to mention or uh, whatever, um, I can do that too. If you prefer to, if you prefer to stay anonymous, that's fine as well. Here, we're just getting the light coming through now, and the, the extra detail. As I say, once you start putting more and more layers of paint onto the canvas, these details sort of build out. We're going to get this. It's a bit of a sort of a shadow here at the bottom that I wanted to emphasize some more. As ever, I'm often a little bit um, 
lacks on doing the foreground. I often leave that towards the end. I don't know what it is. I, I seem to love doing the, the light going through the trees the most. Yeah, but we do need to work on this foreground a little bit as it, it's sort of falling behind in the painting. So let's get a bit of that done. There's a bit of darkness over here around these trees. bit of a slight dip in the landscape just there so let's uh, get a nice larger brush and just get some of this colour in. I quite like this uh, purple colour. I might put some of this into the uh, to the background a little but let's just let's just work on the shadowy areas here because it's, it's not getting enough enough attention. Let's put some here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that looks quite nice using some of that purple in there. Just mixing with the other colours. You don't want to overdo that too much because um, otherwise you'll obliterate the colours we have. But there are some dark areas up there that they would do with this purple. It sort of turns it to a brown when it's mixed with the greeny areas. Nice bigger brush. Just get this, get this a bit darker, I think. We can always bring it up with the colour later. It is quite dark here on this forest floor. Once again, this is a photograph I took in uh, the new forest in Hampshire. It's local to me, so that's where I get my photography from. It's like the early morning or, or early evening that um, you get this kind of nice sunlight through the trees effect. Let's put some of this green in here. We'll probably be going over a lot of this later, but I think it's important that there is at least a few touches of it that we can uh, bring a bit of life to, to it all. Yeah, let's get some of these little brush and bushes and trees and leaves here coming in. We're back to a very small brush again, because we really want to get some detail in. We're now we're sort of approaching the, the end point, and that does mean we, we need to get more um, more finicky but we also want to be still loose so you can see I'm just sort of scribbling things on now this obviously wouldn't be possible with a brush because you the way your brush moves isn't quite the same as a, a pen but we're still simulating a very painterly style of, of working it's an interesting it's an interesting thing using this because it does look very much like paint on the canvas but the way you can use the tools are very different, but uh, I, I, I'm kind of liking it. It's uh, it's it's a new medium, um, and uh, there's art can be produced in any medium that you like, and this this is a uh, this is almost like a new invention of of, of paint. But we can bring everything we've learned from the canvas. To the painting. Yeah, let's get a few leaves across some of these trees because that's how they are. Bright up down there. Yeah. Some of these. That's right, we'll just define these trees a little bit more some of these darker areas in. Bring this up a little because this is in the foreground. It's not very obvious on the photograph but I kind of want to make it more, more clear that there's a sort of branch right now, right now foreground. It sort of goes off into the picture. Let's use some of these scribbly lines to add to the chaos of the forest that's going on back there. 
me goodness sakes, if you went into there and tried to draw every little branch and leaf, you'd be there for, for days doing that. And uh, what would you achieve with the, the photograph, I imagine? But that's why we're just giving us sort of an impression of what's going on back there. So these sort of scribbly lines really help our minds just to create those images for us. So don't be, don't be a bit scared of, of some chaos and some inaccuracy, especially in a scene like this. I'm hoping even if you don't have a uh, painter, um, you can use these techniques in other art programs. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to to do any specifically overly complicated things that this program would only have. Um, some of them obviously aren't simulated in other programs. I don't know all the other programs, but I would hope that you could do something similar in the program you've got. Starting to really get get towards the end here. Let's get these little bits of detail in and try to just balance the painting out really. Occasionally just sort of step back and have a look at it. I think uh, a bit more here, a bit more, a bit less there. Uh, it's kind of a log at the front here, needs a bit more work. And let's not forget the foreground. Yeah, it's just time to add the light coming through these trees. It's probably the most exciting bit of the painting. We're almost just using a pure white here, just a dot about to get the idea of where the light is just breaking through. Yeah, just this there. This is where the painting really starts to come to life. It's using a light blue here. As we're moving away from the, the focal point where the light is, it's absolutely breaking through. And then once again, slightly lighter in these areas too. This is kind of where the light's hitting the leaves and illuminating them. It's what causes this wonderful effect in the forest. And then we'll go over some of these areas again with the slightly darker light color um, just to simulate those, those leaves. We keep going over and over each other once again on top of itself and over again. We'll get this effect. Once again, we're trying to fool the eye to believing that this is light. It's almost always best to put the, the lightest areas in uh, last, especially when they're, they're small and pinpoint like this. There's a little bit of uh, light here on this branch. Put 
putting in maybe a little bit more than there is but that's that's part of the artistic license you want to emphasize things a little more yeah this is a fairly small brush now and we're just sort of doing little dabs here and there little scribbly bits And it's really starting to come together. We're really starting to get a, a more exciting painting now. Yeah, a bit of blue in here. It may not actually be in the, in the actual photograph, but that's okay. It's nice to use the same colours throughout the throughout the painting in different areas. I'd rather just give a sort of a balancey feel to it all. Yeah, it just feels right just putting them up here. Got to be careful not to overdo it, of course. Because you can get carried away at this stage. Because this is really where it, it starts to feel very exciting. The, uh, oh, don't need it that big. There we go. I've reduced how much paint gets put on the canvas at a time. This would sort of simulate having a very wet brush with a little bit of paint on. Just sort of put these rays, I think, uh, in the computer world, they're called God rays. I guess uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fairly nice name for them. It just gives it a kind of a feel to the canvas that um, that there's light coming through. Go with some darker colours here, just to just to blur out some of this because these brush strokes have been quite quite solid, and um, we do need to put some light down here too. Let's not forget the foreground as I often do. Once again, that made that far too big. Need a nice small brush again. Get that back up to being a bit more opaque. Yeah, with with a real canvas, the and uh, acrylic paint. Um, if you want it to be opaque, you make very thick paint. If you want it to be translucent, i.e. Well, lets the, the paint show through from the layer be below, um, you add more water to it. So let's just put some sort of scrappy lines in here. And, uh, build those up, yeah. Add some extra light to these branches, just as they're catching the, the light coming through. Put a few in here. There we go. And, uh, brighten that up. Yep. Let's add some extra scrappy bits in. Yeah, this is this is starting to look really nice now. I'm quite pleased with that. here but it's nice just to put those kind of vertical lines in so I was like I say you're you're not recreating the photograph exactly you're using it as your stepping off point so you know, feel free to add little bits in that don't exist let's go over this again just to bring 
at some of the uh, leaves in the background and some of the sort of feelings of branches maybe as well. Yeah, this is all just fiddle bits here towards the end of the painting. We're, we're just adding more and more details just to just to bring things alive. Now this, this wouldn't necessarily need to be the end for your painting if you were doing this. You could carry on and make it more and more detailed from this point on. Uh, but I tend to like to keep things about this level of of mess, just to give a more um, semi-abstract feel to the painting. Um, I, f I feel if we you could o you could overwork things to the point where um, y you you start to create um, images that look wrong because you're not allowing the the viewer to do some of the work and fill in the gaps for you. If you filled in all the gaps um, and you haven't done something that's absolutely accurate, it can get to this um, a place that some people refer to as this or the uncanny valley. It works much worse when you're doing um, portraiture. Um, if, you, if you make things look, tr try to look too realistic when they're not, then you get a, a sort of a weird uh, feeling from the viewer that the thing is, is off um, so you either have to get it very realistic or go the other direction and make it so it's it's not obviously realistic but anyway here we are we're getting right to the end here I think we'll just do a few little bit more on there and if you've liked this video uh, please do share it with your friends hit the like button hit the subscribe button so you can see more of them in the future and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for viewing. Goodbye.